Hey, it's Andrew from PracticalMaker.com. We're looking at Patch Bay because I actually finished adding in the Patch Bay code into the Macroduino code. Uh, so we can actually send um, digital readings, analog readings, pH readings, and temperature readings to a Patch Bay feed, uh, which I'm going to actually show you right now. So I've got uh, five streams set up. We've got uh, pH. Uh, so we've got the pH here. Don't worry about these. They weren't uh, correct, but right now we're reading 14.4, which is uh, because I don't have a pH probe hooked up to it right now. Temperature readings, uh, we're reading 79.69, and that's been fairly steady. Same thing for uh, analog readings. So we actually started in at ground, went to 5 volts, went down to 3.3 volts, and then went back down to 0 volts. Uh, the last two are the success and failure um, numbers. So e each time the Arduino makes a successful call to patch bay, it will increment this. And each time it fails, so if it doesn't connect, um, so for example, if patch bay went down, uh, this would increment. Um, so basically, you can see here, when we first started logging data, the number of failures kept going up and this was actually a problem I had to reset my <laughs> one of my routers um, and once it was reset uh, actually the Arduino got reset as well uh, the number of failures went to zero and the number of successes uh, started climbing and you can see here when the successes drop down to zero it actually means that the Arduino was reset so this is kind of a warning system um, that, that lets you just make sure that everything's running okay. Uh, so we're actually going to show you the code and how to configure it and then I'm going to show you something really cool. So to start out you need to take get the latest Macroduino code from GitHub. Uh, there's a link on the website uh, under the projects Macroduino uh, project page. So you need to change the share feed ID to whatever the feed uh, ID is that you have don't worry about the remote feeds that's uh, for if you want to pull data from patch bay and I don't actually think I'll implement that because the web app takes care of all of this for you you also need to put in your API key uh, in between the quotes and you're pretty much 25 percent of the way done uh, you'll notice here it says to configure what data you send to patch bay look in patch bay functions dot h and so we look in uh, patch bay functions and you actually only need to worry about this big comment here which kind of explains I hope um, if you have any questions do feel free to let me know and I'll try and I'll do my best to help you uh, so you can actually send four things as I said a digital read analog read a pH value and a temperature reading um, so we're actually going to just take a look at the line and I'm going to explain uh, how each of these are set up here. So the first um, the first thing that we send these are all comma separated so you send pH and then comma temperature comma uh, which is what these commas are doing here. Uh, the first thing we send is pH so to figure out pH you need these two lines and uh, if you want to add multiple pHs just change pH 1 to pH 2 and uh, the first part of it is percent zero D dot percent D and then the next uh, arguments are um, just these two just copy them in uh, is, is easiest it um, is probably easier than me explaining what is actually going on um, and then the next one we have is uh, the temperature so we do the same thing um, if you want multiple temperatures just uh, you know change temp one to temp two and uh, so we have uh, the pH um, and then a comma and then we have the temperature ones which is percent zero D dot percent D comma and so those are the two tricky ones because the Arduino doesn't have sprintf because it would including that uh, library for floats would fill the Arduino um, which we don't want so next we have analog reads which are dead simple is just uh, percent D and then a comma and then your analog read 
And uh, the last two arguments, you can keep these or get rid of them, is patch based successes, so number of successful calls, which is uh, this one here, and the number of failures, which is uh, this one here. And the nice thing about this is you can set up your line and uh, change debug to 1. So actually up at the top here, you need to define define debug as 1 and make sure define serial interface on is 1. And uh, after you set up your line, just upload it, open the serial monitor and it will uh, print out um, this line and you'll be able to check whether or not it's correct. So for example, because we're sending pH, temperature, an analog reading, number of successes, and number of failures, our line should actually look something like this. So your serial will put out uh, patch bay data, so our pH was 14.4 and then a comma, and 79.57 uh, and then a comma. Analog read will say 1023, comma, number of successes 26, and number of failures 0. And uh, if you don't have that, if your line doesn't look right, just fiddle around with it, or you can uh, go on the website and contact me, and I will uh, help you set up your line. And that's all there is to it uh, for setting this up. It's uh, dead simple, but of course, I'm here to help if you have any, any trouble. Now for the cool part. Do you remember how I said that the web app works online? You, all you need to do to do that is set a port on your router to forward to port 80 on your Arduino. So you would basically set up DynDNS um, to have, have it auto update. Now you'll just go to DynDNS.org and uh, it's pretty simple to set up. Set up your own, we'll just call ours Practical Maker as our name and if you go here so let's say if pH uh, if pH drops below um, let's say 7 now you, you could have a macro do this on your uh, Arduino and if that fails you could also just shut everything off so if you did uh, HTTP practical maker dot DynDNS dot org um, and then whoops port let's say nine zero so on your router you forwarded port ninety ninety nine to port eighty of your Arduino um, when this is less than uh, let's say seven point eight you would actually just send a let's turn pin 9 off so 490 will turn pin 9 off if the pH drops below 7.8 so that is pretty cool you could actually if you don't have space for macros uh, because there's only 20 you could actually use your data streams um, and triggers to control the Arduino um, to save space on macros and I think this is really cool uh, so I, I'm gonna do a write-up and a actual video but I just thought about it while I was making the video before and I figured well I'll scratch this and make it again so I can show you uh, how cool this actually can get so I, I hope you enjoy the video and of course if there's any questions or uh, comments or feedback just uh, let me know on the website or leave a comment